figuring out how to pay for college can be overwhelming because there are so many different terminology, key terms, uh, forms, deadlines, etc. Now, in today's video, I want to focus on three main ways and options that your family has access to in order to help pay for college. Now, make sure you hit subscribe because every week I'm releasing a new strategy to help your family work towards that debt-free degree. Hey there, my name is Jocelyn Pearson, founder of the Scholarship System and Debt-Free Degree Lab, where we redefine paying for college to help families build strong financial futures rather than ones where they're paying on loans for decades to come. Now, we primarily focus on scholarships, but in today's video, I want to talk about a few different types of money so that you can understand what is an option, what is out there for you and your student. Now, this is for U.S. citizens and residents of the United States, so if you're an inter international student, this most likely won't necessarily apply to you. Now, I have a lot of videos on each of these topics, so I'm not going to dive too deeply in them, but check out the description afterwards and find all the links to the resources that I mentioned in here. That's where you can find a lot of, we have entire playlists on these specific topics. But the first one is one that is near and dear to my heart, and if you're on this channel, it probably is to yours as well, and that is scholarships. So this is a great way to pay for college scholarships. They do not have to be paid back in typically, unless maybe your student didn't meet criteria and that was part of the agreement. But for the most part, they do not have to be paid back and they can be for so many different reasons, so many different topics, so many different criteria eligibility. It, the, the, Sky is a limit when it comes to scholarships, which is why I love them so much. They are for the elite students, they are for the average students like myself, like how I was, and they can even be for the students that consider themselves uh, not studious whatsoever. So there's a lot of options out here when it comes to scholarships. Now, most people, when they think of scholarships, they're thinking of something I call merit scholarships. So merit scholarships, they are usually based on merit, on academic achievement or other qualities like service, leadership, maybe even athletic performance. So when most people think of scholarships, they think this is the way that we have to do it. The money that's awarded from the university for a specific type of merit. Now, in addition to merit scholarships, there are need-based scholarships or need-based aid, and this is based on financial need. Now, what's surprising to most families is that that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a low income, but you may be in that middle ground where uh, paying for college is still not an option, even though your family has a salaried job. So don't rule out need-based aid just because a colleague or a friend or family member told you so. So in addition to institutional scholarships like the merit ones I mentioned or the financial aid ones like that are given through the, the institution but also through the government, there are also scholarships, and these are my favorite, that are given by private organizations and institutions, companies, businesses, you name it. This is why we want to explore all the options to you. Um, there are scholarships out there for specific majors, life events, circumstances, characteristics, hobbies, passions, career paths, you name it, there is a scholarship for it. And recently, we just shared one for our members in our members only Facebook group for knitting. So if you are looking for scholarships, if you and your student want to find legitimate ones to apply to, including these private ones, you can check out my free training. I have a whole webinar with exact, the exact six steps that we take to, if for me, I secured over six figures in scholarships and for so many other families that they followed in order to get scholarships. So make sure you check out that free training. Now comment below, has have you and your student found any unique scholarships? What was it for? I'd love to see the topic below. Now the next category of money is, is financial aid awarded through FAFSA. I briefly touched on this in under scholarships because a lot of people um, kind of lump them together, but FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. So I mentioned earlier that money can be given through the government. In order to access this money, you and your student must fill out FAFSA every single year they're attending college, starting the senior year in in high school for the following year when they're going to be in school, and again, all the way until they graduate. Now, this is not just about federal student loans. This can open up to federal grants, 
state grants, and of course, yes, the student loans as well. Now, most colleges will require this at this point. In fact, I've even seen high schools require this for graduation because they know it is so important. Even if your student does not receive any debt-free money, these loans will typically be the best terms that they can get and typically don't require a cosigner. Uh, so we want to make sure that we maximize the FAFSA funds first before taking out, for example, private student loans. Now, in order to be eligible for money through FAFSA, there are both uh, government-based and school-based requirements that must be met. So first and foremost, there are deadlines. You want to make sure each school will have a different deadline. So we want to make sure that we're watching that for when we need to submit FAFSA by um, income level, of course, is an aspect that's factored into this. this these are need-based. Uh, accreditation of the school, they must be accredited. And then uh, satisfactory academic progress, SAP. This is where a student will have requirements for a minimum amount of hours, but also a, uh, a certain GPA in order to keep the funding. Now I have an entire playlist dedicated to FAFSA because this is such a critical form for all families that have students attending college. So again, we'll link to that in the description. Stick with me. You can check it out at the end. Now the third, I guess I did this in order by my favorite to my least favorite, but I have to cover this third one because a lot of families are going to face these, um, hopefully way less of these if you're following the tips on these videos, or you may be to able to avoid this topic altogether if you really follow the tips like I was able to, but these are student loans. So student loans are another type of funding for paying for college, but there are different types of student loans. So earlier I talked about the ones with the best terms if we do have to borrow money, and those are the government-based loans. There are subsidized loans, there are unsubsidized loans. Again, I will link to videos describing the difference between those and uh, everything we need to know about student loans. I'll link to a playlist for you. But really, the, the government ones typically do not require uh, a cosigner. Your student should be able to take out some on their own. Maybe then they you'll be looking into the Parent PLUS loans where, of course, that is a parent signing for those. But at least this is an opportunity for students to take out money without their parents having to co-sign it. And often they have the best terms. For example, federal loans, they were the first ones during COVID to immediately halt payments. They were way more flexible right from the beginning and then others followed suit. Now in order to tap into this money, again, your family must submit FAFSA. So even if you don't get anything else, typically your student should get some federal loan money. Secondly, there are private loans. So these are through private companies. Some specialize in just student loans, undergraduate loans. Some are through banks. I have an entire video on the best private loans, in my opinion, and the, the best funders that we've seen if a student does have to borrow money. So again, we will link to that as well. But really there's, I also have a video on what you need to compare when shopping around for student loans because uh, they can vary greatly, especially in the private loan world. Criteria may vary. Maybe they require certain types of schools, certain type of hours, uh, certain credit scores, and cosigners. Uh, maybe they have fixed rates, variable, variable rates but we wanna make sure we shop around because they really can vary place to place. So that said, we talked about scholarships. We talked about how they don't have to be paid back. They are debt-free money. They are my absolute favorite. They're the creme de la creme when it comes to paying for college. And in fact, students can, I got to where I received more scholarships than what my college bill was. And so I got the remaining amount back in a check, which I call an overage check. So scholarships really are the way we wanna go first. And so if you and your student are trying to build a list of scholarships, make sure you check out that free training in linked in the description or popping up somewhere here on the screen. Second, we talked about FAFSA that's tapping into that federal aid as well as state-based aid, but it is government-based. And then third, we talked about student loans. There are government-based loans, which we also tap into through FAFSA, but also there are private loans out there. So these are three major buckets when it comes to paying for college that we have to understand. Every family needs to understand this. So I hope that this was helpful. Now, again, there are so many different options out there when it comes to paying for college. That is why we do what we do. So make sure you hit subscribe because every week there's a new strategy that we release 
on how to pay for college. And again, make sure that you check out that free training I mentioned. Um, that said, lastly, not every option is right for every situation. So you really want to find out what the puzzle looks like for your family, what combination of options is best for your family. This is something that we talk a lot about with Debt Free Degree Lab, our, our uh, second sister program. Um, well, you know, every family is puzzle looks different, how they piece together all these different options. So at least now you understand three of the main buckets. All right. I will see you in the next video.